The Congress of the United States is an institution with many traditions and rules of decorum. While today they never seem nearly as chaotic as some other legislatures such as the British House of Commons, that doesn't mean there hasn't been times where senators and or representatives get very unruly. Therefore, it is important that there is a process for keeping the peace in Congress should that ever be broken. That is why we have two sergeants at arms, one for the Senate and the other for the House of Representatives. Each is in charge of their own wing's security, responsible for protecting Congress members, the President, should he be stopping by, is also protected by them, and then foreign dignitaries are also under their protection visiting. They also keep order in their chambers while Congress is in session, similar to a bailiff in a courtroom. They even have the power to forcibly drag members of Congress to their post if they refuse to show up and are required to be there. While those are the main responsibilities of the two sergeants at arms, here are a few more as testified by then sergeant at arms Howard Green. Our services provided by the sergeant at arms include the computer center, the service department, the telecommunications de department, recording studio, photographic studios, Senate post office, state office coordination, capital guide service, Barbershop, beauty shop, Senate parking, human resources, Senate placement office, procurement and maintenance of Senate vehicles, furnishings and custodial services in the Senate, Senate pages, and operation of the media galleries, for starters. Even haircuts? Really? That honestly sounds like a topic Mr. Beat will make a video on someday. Oh well, moving on. However, in regards to keeping order in Congress, this may include disciplining members of Congress or even detaining and arresting them should it ever have to come to that point. Specifically, for the sergeant at arms of the House, they have a tool used for disciplining members in the form of a House mace. Throughout American history, this mace has been used to conduct sessions of the House of Representatives and has also been used to discipline members of the House. So for this video, we're going to look into the history of the mace and the times it's been used. But before we get into that, we're going to briefly talk about this video sponsor, Ridge. Ridge is a company that makes special metal wallets of a simple design. The two sheets of metal connected together make it easy to keep all of your cards compacted into a slim form to make it not only easy to keep together, but to keep secure. Plus, there are many really cool designs to choose from. I've enjoyed my wallet for years now, and you can also get one with a 10% discount if you use the code EMPEROR with the link below. But if that wasn't enough, this time Ridge is having a special giveaway where if you buy something from their website, you'll be entered in for a chance to win a brand new Ford Bronco. So remember, use that code EMPEROR for the 10% discount with the link below and get a Ridge wallet today. Or any of their other cool products, they seriously make a lot of neat stuff. Thanks again to Ridge for sponsoring this video. The Mace of the House of Representatives, sometimes nicknamed the House Mace or the Mace of the Republic, is considered a symbol of authority for the House. This is actually common in a lot of legislatures around the world, especially in the British Commonwealth, where the parliamentary mace represents a symbol of the monarch's authority. They put it on display to symbolize they have permission to create laws, and then they freak out if someone dares touch it. However, while Commonwealth maces look a lot like royal scepters, the house mace has a much different design. There is a bundle of 13 ebony rods, meant to symbolize the original 13 colonies, wrapped together with silver and with a silver orb on top representing the globe and the western hemisphere, with the famous American eagle perched on top. It also fittingly weighs 13 pounds. The symbol of bound rods with a staff of some kind in the middle represents the fasces symbol, an Etruscan and Roman symbol for authority and power. This is also where fascism comes from since, you know, fascism loves absolute authority. But the United States in this case has always had a lot of Roman Republic symbolism, and the fasces as a symbol is nothing surprising. They even used to have it on the dime until it was changed to a torch after World War II. Nevertheless, this design of the house mace has existed since 1842. Originally, there was a wooden mace used by the house, but it got destroyed in the War of 1812 when the British lit the capital on fire. I couldn't find any depiction of it anywhere. In 1842, they hired a New York silversmith named William Adams and had him make it for $400, which in today's money is about $12,500. It has stood the test of time since then, although every 10 years the house mace is sent away to the Smithsonian to be cleaned and restored. Similar to other maces, the house of mace is used ceremoniously in the House of Representatives. When the house is in session, it stands on a pedestal to the right of the house speaker. 
When the House is in committee, it's kept by the sergeant at arms' desk. Pretty straightforward, but what about disciplining? I'll let former House Sergeant at Arms Jack Russ explain it. A very powerful symbol which allows the Speaker to maintain order if and when the House became completely unruly. He would, uh, he would uh, instruct the Sergeant at Arms to present the mace. And when you present the mace, you literally walk down to the members and present the mace. Or if, uh, in the event that a quorum could not be established in the House of Representatives, he would instruct the Sergeant at Arms to round up the members, whereupon I would take the mace and go out and to the Capitol Square here and bring members back into the chamber for a Now, admittedly, it's kind of cool and funny to imagine the idea of a sergeant at arms finding you and essentially holding the mace like a bat and asking if you want to come back to the house the easy way or the hard way. But has the mace ever gone past being merely presented? Has it been wielded before? The answer to that is yes, depending on how you define wield. I've seen the phrase wielded the mace during many events, which seems to apply they're going past just presenting the mace. But depending on what definition of the word wield you'll find, it could either mean they're pointing it threateningly or they're actually thrusting or whacking. Normally, if the member doesn't obey the sergeant at arms attempts to restore order, they're arrested by any means physically available to the sergeant. So he doesn't have to bludgeon them with it, but he could. Wikipedia has said it was wielded at least six times. I did some digging around in some sources, and I got a count of 11 times of the mace being wielded, at least from official records and verified accounts. I won't go into every event of the mace being wielded, but here are three of my favorites. On February 5th, 1858, Representative Lawrence Keat of South Carolina quarreled with Representative Galusha Groh of Pennsylvania. And after Groh made a smart aleck remark, Representative Keat choked his neck. Groh, however, freed himself from his chokehold and smacked him to the ground. At this point, the fight spread to the rest of the chamber. The sergeant at arms grabbed the mace and purposefully swung it above the heads of the fighting congressmen on both sides, to try and restore order while giving off the impression of taking neither side of the argument. So I suppose in this case he wielded it but didn't strike any blows, but hey, it worked, and they all sat down and order was restored. In January of 1860, Representative John Haskin of New York accused Representative Horace Clark of being both pro and anti-slavery in regards to Kansas. As the fight grew, Haskin pulled out a gun. The gun was knocked out of his hand and after some, and this is how the book The Field of Blood phrases it, quote, strategic mace wielding, end quote, order was restored as best as it could be. A representative from Louisiana attempted to lighten the mood by joking that if such events would continue, then perhaps he should bring his shotgun next time. The other representatives did not find that funny. On January 31st of 1877, the entire House got so unruly over the presidential election of 1876. Basically, the votes for Florida were too close to call, and therefore the fate on who would become president was in the air. Hmm, where have I heard that before? Anywho, there were weeks of debate over what to do, and on this date, that debate broke out into an all-out fight. The sergeant at arms went to present the mace, but it didn't work. He then reportedly thrusted it towards members of the house, and that didn't really work either, they were just too distracted in the fight. Assuming he would now be ordered to begin arresting members of Congress, the sergeant at arms went back to the desk of the speaker, but before it went any further, the speaker of the house just gave up and ordered the house to adjourn for the day, as arresting two-thirds of the house would have been too much of a hassle. As it so happens, the last wielding of the mace was in 1917 over an unruly representative accusing another of being unpatriotic for voting against the war with Germany. But when was the last time the mace was threatened? That would be on July 29, 1994, when Representative Maxine Waters refused to stop speaking despite her time having ended. When the mace was threatened, Waters finally decided to sit down. There's even some very fuzzy footage of this on TV. This is you a fine example suspend. of what they tried to do you to us. Suspend. I am Madam pleased Speaker, I move this house to now adjourn. that I was able to come to Madam Maggie Speaker. Williams' defense. The Madam women Speaker, of this nation now will Madam. not continue to have Madam this Speaker, kind of put treatment. The question. Would you please? That's a fine example. Thank you, Madam Chair. Will the side of arms? Oh. The woman was out of order. The chair was about to direct the sergeant-in-arms to remove, to present the, the mace. Do it now. 
Now, I personally find it surprising that in spite of how chaotic things seem to be now in Washington, the mace has not been threatened since. What I found more puzzling, though, is that the Senate doesn't have a mace. The closest equivalent they have is a gavel, but that's certainly not the same. I mean, the House has one, too. One theory is that the reason why the Senate does not have such a mace is because historically the Senate usually had a more elite, upper-class set of members, while the House was more likely to have more common folk elected. Supposedly, such fancy, distinguished gentlemen would never need such discipline like the common riffraff elected in the House. I don't know if that's true, but it's an idea, I guess. Regardless, the mace of the House remains a fascinating symbol of government, and one not often discussed. While it may have not been used in over a hundred years, who knows, maybe there will be a viral video of it being wielded in the future. It'd certainly be something. I'm Emperor Tigerstar, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video and you want to see more, you can subscribe, or you can also support this channel on my Patreon. I'll finally be doing YouTube full-time, and every little bit helps. Thank you very much.